Hi, I'm Kermit the Alien and you're watching Resto Roomba. Welcome to part 2 of the Roomba 625 professional restoration. In this video we're gonna focus on repainting and modifying, fixing the motherboard, restoring the home base and reassembly. In the first part I did all the cleaning and disassembling, so if you haven't watched part 1 of this video, make sure to do it now. Let's start by taking apart and cleaning the home base. This, unlike the Roomba, is actually functional, as I tested it out on my other robot earlier. The thing is, it's very dirty and I wanted to give it some character. To remove the bottom cover, you have to unscrew two small screws located in the front, as well as find and unscrew four more underneath the anti-slip pad. Gently pull the plastic to access the inner workings. Now I'm gonna remove the charging contacts, and if you do this, please remember which wire goes where, as you do not want to reverse the polarity. Just write it down somewhere or take a photo and you'll make your life much easier. The main circuit board is held on using four small screws. I will also remove the IR LED casing, as I want to repaint and smooth out the top of it. To remove the decorative plate from the home base, use a small screwdriver and gently lift it, then pull it off. During this process, the LED covers will fall out, so be sure not to lose them. Here it is before the cleaning and after. Let's move on to repainting and body mods. Before I repaint anything, I like to plan out what I want to paint and how I want to paint it. This is my design for both the Roomba and the home base. Here you can see I will be modifying the bumper to have spikes to make the Roomba look more like a rock star. The faceplate I really want to paint exactly like the guitar, so I'll be using glitter for the first time on a robot. I always start with de-scratching all of the parts. For this process I do a few coats of clear resin based spray paint. In this case, I use a super glossy finish to really make the metallics shine. While the paint was drying, I used my new 3D printer to make the spikes. This is actually a project I downloaded from Thingiverse. There you have it if you want to do it yourself. These came out not as sharp as I wanted them to be, so I used epoxy sculpt to reshape them and also to make threads for the screws that will be holding these in place. When the epoxy cures, I send the spikes and paint them glossy black. This will be a base for the silver spray paint, as silver metallics show off the best over black. Here they are after the spray, and I have to say, these turned out amazing! To attach the spikes to the bumper, I drilled out four small fittings for the screws, then tightly screw them in place. To really make sure they'll stay in place, I put some Loctite inside. Now on to repainting the dustbin release button. Because I will be only repainting the outer ring, I seal the circle with liquid latex, so I can peel the unwanted paint later. When the latex dries, I once again use silver chrome spray. Peel off the latex and even out the edges. On Space Dementia, I want its name to be written on its left side. Here is my sketch. I designed this name so it resembles both the Muse logo and the Manson Guitar Works logo. I prime the surface that I want to paint with Mr. Super Clear in UV Cut Flat, so I can sketch it out with watercolor pencils first. 
I paint the space gunmetal and the dementia silver. I also used some holographic micro glitter to bedazzle the dementia part. Can't have Matt Bellamy without the sparkles. When I am happy with my design, I seal it all in with resin-based glossy spray paint. To paint both of the IR LED and IR receiver casings tops, I must protect the clear part first. I use painter's tape. Now onto the hardest part, both of the face plates. Because they will be completely repainted, they need to be sanded first. I preserve the iRobot logo using liquid latex again. To add our desired color, the pieces have to be primed first. I want them to have a deep metallic red finish, so I start off with metallic red airbrush paint. To add more dimension, I added some black to the mix and shaded the edges. To achieve the deep red look, I paint the whole thing with candy, which basically means transparent red airbrush paint. This also helps the reds and blacks become one. To do the glitter stripes, I used four different sizes of holographic glitter, and to adhere it I used gloss sealant. I reapply the Professional Series sticker and seal everything with gloss clear coat for the last time. That's it for the repainting and modding! Let's take care of the motherboard now and then we can put this robot back together. As you might remember, this motherboard is malfunctioning because it apparently took a fruit juice bath. To remove the staining and some of the rust, I soak it in distilled water, then gently scrub it with a toothbrush. Here it is after the treatment. Now to remove the rust completely, I will be using isopropyl alcohol. Shots anyone? During the rust removal, sadly two of the transistors broke off and one capacitor lost his legs. I noticed the two still standing transistors were all rusted and two capacitors leaked. I desoldered these parts and ordered replacements, then derusted the board completely. Here are my new caps, and because they are higher league, they turned out to be a bit too big, so I had to solder them like this. Here are the new transistors as well. Here you have a little before and after. After my fixing, the display still behaves how it wants to, however the situation is a bit better. It displays errors correctly now and stops glowing when the robot is off. That's an improvement, but still, I'm not quite satisfied. If I ever get this to work again, I'll post an update. Build is basically the same as the teardown, but in reverse order.
And with that, Space Dementia is ready for its debut. Let's see its first ever live performance. <laughs> 